This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. If you've watched my early videos, you know that I'm a constitutional conservative. The only time that I think that huge amounts of unfunded government spending by fiat is necessary is during a national crisis. War qualifies as such a crisis. Natural disasters also qualify. I believe this outbreak qualifies and I support whatever rational measures are needed to address all of the issues involved. And yet, I've seen bickering in Congress over the Phase 3 relief bill. You know the bill. It's the one which would provide well over a trillion dollars of funding for outbreak response, as well as funding to keep businesses alive and workers paid. It's the one which keeps going up in value every time we look up the latest news on it. When I hear why there's bickering in Congress, and why it's now stuck in the Senate after repeated procedural votes, let's just say it's definitely time for some roasted opinions. There's been a lot of disruption to our country because of this public health crisis. The best way to slow the spread of infectious diseases is to prevent transmission. Doing this requires that we put a stop to unnecessary gatherings, especially in public spaces, due to the fact that the virus in question is airborne and can linger on some surfaces for up to four days. I am working from home right now and will be doing so until I'm told otherwise. My kids are out of school completing distance learning assignments. We aren't in quarantine, and we aren't enforcing self-isolation. Still, we don't go anywhere right now until and unless we have to go there. Trips to the store are carefully planned to limit the amount of time we are inside the building. Whenever possible, we order what we can online to further limit our exposures. Does that sound familiar? I thought so. That's what people all over the world are doing right now. Now let's think for just a minute about this. When one or two households are doing this, no one notices. When one or two thousand households are doing this, it's noticed. There are currently tens of millions of households doing some version of this social distancing. The economy worldwide is grinding to a halt. Manufacturers are maximizing their production of critical supplies despite a shortage of labor. Some are even switching over production to critical commodities. Ford and GM are currently figuring out how to start producing ventilators to meet the demand for this critical piece of equipment. While much manufacturing is still ongoing and the transportation industry is running flat out to deliver critical shipments to their destinations, many businesses are effectively shut down. Travel, tourism, hospitality, entertainment. The workers in these industries are looking for relief and the businesses themselves are looking for relief to stay afloat until they can reopen their doors. And that's what this bill is about. Saving businesses, saving jobs, and saving workers who just lost their jobs because of the measures which have to be taken to stop the spread of the virus. It provides funding to hospitals and clinics who are awash in patients and canceling all elective procedures. It provides loans so that businesses can make payroll, with the caveat that these businesses will see their loans forgiven if and only if they keep all of their employees on the payroll throughout this crisis. It also provides direct tax rebates to households all over the nation, many of whom have insufficient reserves to survive a prolonged layoff without financial ruin. It's very much a bipartisan set of measures designed to get targeted help to low-income individuals and small businesses. So why are the Senate Democrats holding up passage of this bill using procedural votes? It's because of the list of issues which the Senate Democrats have demanded be added into the stimulus bill. This list includes tax credits for solar panel manufacturers, stricter carbon limits on the airline industry, and unprecedented levels of collective bargaining strength for unions. These would be tied directly to the corporate stimulus in the bill. This means that airlines, which have largely idled their fleets and faced the prospect of laying off most of their workforce, will have to restructure their carbon footprints, or they will have to do without the assistance at all. This is just one example of how this would affect those trying to keep their companies out of bankruptcy, mind you. There's also a group of representatives demanding that student loans be placed in forbearance. Not a bad idea, really. But they also want to have up to 10 grand of student debt per person forgiven. 
allowing people to restructure their repayment plans and get out of default status, sure. But forgiving billions of dollars of debt? Um, no. Just no. Not at least after we saw what happened at the beaches during spring break. People are actually arguing for these measures, though. They claim that the demands of the Democrats will stimulate the economy. Stimulate? How does hitting airlines with stricter emission controls stimulate the economy? How does slush funding solar panels stimulate the economy, especially when people are complaining about slush funds? How does pandering to union voters stimulate the economy? Someone explain it to me, please. After all, I'm trying to keep an open mind here. Oh, and just in case you think that the games being played in the Senate aren't hurting anyone, watch the stock markets dive every time another procedural vote fail, and watch them climb when progress is announced. When the market dives, that's businesses losing the market value they use as collateral for their loans, folks. Loans, I might add, which they are using to make payroll and keep as many of their employees as possible paid. Loans that will keep them in business through this crisis so that we can mitigate the horrendous economic effects and avoid a depression. Speaker Pelosi has, meanwhile, proposed her own legislation. Is it short and to the point? Nah. This is the person who crafted a health care bill so long that we had to pass it to see what was in it. This new bill also looks like it was written by Leo Tolstoy, at over 1,400 pages long. It includes such timely economic stimulus measures as a reporting requirement for corporate pay statistics by race, a bailout of all current postal service debt, a mandate for states to offer both early voting and same-day voter registration, a mandate that workers must choose a third of all corporate board members, mandatory reporting of greenhouse gas statistics for each flight, retirement plans for community newspaper employees, a mandatory increase to a $15 minimum wage and permanent paid leave for employees at all companies receiving assistance, and even a provision to provide grants to conduct post-election audits of the results. That's in addition to everything which Senator Schumer and Pelosi's fellow representatives are demanding. And I haven't included everything that's in Pelosi's bill, by far. She also had time to demand that the president end his lawsuit against the Affordable Care Act. Interesting that the lawsuit against a bill too long to read before passage gets mentioned when introducing a bill too long to read before passage. Good God. They are about to kill the stimulus bill in Congress, aren't they? Now, earlier today, Senator Schumer announced that a lot of good progress had been made and they were just a few hours apart from reaching a deal. But later on in the day, Senator McConnell said, we can't have a vote at least until Wednesday. Now, I'm going to do something which I don't really do too often. If you are an American and a registered voter, contact your congressional delegation. Trust me, they have staff standing by to answer the phone calls and emails. Tell them that America cannot wait for them to finish debating the merits of the Green New Deal right now. Tell them to vote out a clean bill. Tell them that America needs for them to show some real bipartisan leadership. Tell them that we need this assistance now. And then tell them that if they cannot get off the stick, that it's time for them to get out of the way. Tell them that you will vote for someone who isn't playing electoral politics with emergency aid packages during a national crisis. Tell them that you will vote for their opponent in November. Tell them that you will find someone to write in if they are running unopposed. Tell them that you will explore whatever recall options are available if necessary. Tell them to hashtag retire from Congress if they don't want to do their jobs.